FDA reports on purity of commercially available CBD products. Washington, D.C. Fewer than half of the commercially available hemp CBD products tested this year by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration contain percentage of cannabidiol that are consistent with the product's labeling, according to the data provided by the agency in a recently released report to Congress. So you are not getting what you think you're getting. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. You probably never were. Here we go. According to the report, the FDA tested 147 CBD-specific products marketed for sale online, including tinctures, capsules, gummies, and beverages. 102 of those products provided information on the label indicating the specific percentages of CBD present in them. However, lab analysis confirmed that only 45% of those products contained actual amounts of CBD that were consistent with the product's advertising. That is less than half. That's almost half. A little less than half. It's troubling. That's what it is. So if you bought... 10 CBDs, half, pretty much half of those wouldn't be what they said. Or at least half the brands out there on the market aren't pushing what they're saying they're pushing. Or it's a, it's a lab issue. Oh, it could be a lab issue. Because we true. all know that these labs don't test the same. There's limits of detection and limits of quantity, which I can't explain to you, but somebody could. Well, you don't know what's going do. on if you don't have consistent testing results. And until there's, you know... Some sort of standard. Standards set down for the labs, there's going to be inconsistencies. And that's going to be a huge overarching theme until they do it. Mm -hmm. I think this is a huge deal to help that out, though. The FDA finally getting to do research on CBD is the type of stuff that'll provide the data that'll keep smaller you know, labs and smaller markets and stuff from taking advantage of consumers. Right. Except the one thing I issue I have with it is that. Like, they're not really doing it. They're just like, hey, does this say it has stuff on it? No. Okay. We're t- it's almost like they're just like being cops. Just We're just going to get you in trouble and tell you that it's all fucked, but not give you actually any solutions. Because what this should say is, we looked at all the CBD. We came up with some regulations on how you should test it. And then we probably shouldn't even be reading this article because it's so complex that we don't need to read it. It should be something the labs. This should all be happening behind the scenes is what I'm saying. And none of it, I don't know if it's ever going to. You don't hear about anyone talking about this or doing anything about it. There's a group in Oklahoma called OK For You Approved, and they are trying to make uh, some regulations. They want to go nationwide with them, but I don't know how they're going to do it. They're going to have to get a bunch of labs to sit down at the table together and, I, I guess, agree on something. Well, I think that getting proper rules set down from the regulatory authority, which is the OMMA here in our state, Right. Or the state itself is the only way to do it. We're the yeah. one state that can research besides the University of Mississippi, which if you look at any of – here, actually, let me just bring this up. I wonder if I can find a photo of the University of Mississippi's weed. Let's see if we can Google this real quick. University mm. of Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, still use that, uh, cannabis. Now let's see if we can find a photo of this trash they're growing because I've heard it is disturbing. And people that they use their, that they test it on are like, we don't like, we don't even feel high. They're getting like 4% THC on it. It's just all the students. They're they're like this, you know, I grow better stuff in my dorm. So Mississippi becomes the sole supplier of, uh, here we go. Of medical? Mississippi becomes this, how did the University of Mississippi become the sole supplier of cannabis for FDA trials? Good stuff, right? Let's, let's actually let's figure out how. National Institute of Health spends an estimated $150 million per year on marijuana research, all of which is sourced from one farm at the University of Mississippi. People don't realize that I run a farm in Mississippi that grows marijuana because I'm required to do so, Francis Collins, director of National Institute of Health. The fresh toast notes. Wait, so the, the director of the National Institute of Health is growing all the weed? But mm. that's the only source that investigators can use. And it may be rather different than what you could get in one of the states where marijuana is now approved in terms of constituents. I know what, uh, long story short, I've heard that the weed they grow is terrible. Well, that's what happens when the, you know, the professors in the school are the ones growing the weed. Right. You need the people smoking it. You need a bunch of stoners and growers to grow your weed. At least um, to take care of it. You know, and if that's the only thing that the FDA is is using to test, well, then Oklahoma is in a great position because we're the only other state that is going to allow a research license, the only one on the planet. So here we come, FDA, with some better weed for you. 
Uh, back to the CBD story. The findings are consistent with those numbers of other analysis, such as those here and here. Not going to click those. Which similarly report the amount of cannabidiol available in commercially distributed CBD hemp products typ- typically differs significantly from what is advertised. I- and I still go back to the lab. M- maybe it isn't significantly different. It's just being significantly differently tested by a significantly different method at a significant different lab. Mm-hmm. These other ones that they're referring to are one of them is potency of CBD products sold online often deviates from what is advertised, which is consistent kind of with this. But the other one is uh, a lot of the CBD products are contaminated with heavy metals. Wow. And this one was looking at 240, over 240 CBD infused products. Did you click the first here or the second, second here? one? I think. All right. We're clicking the second here. And that's, I mean, what have we been smoking our whole lives? Everybody right. metal, Metal and plants? I don't know if anybody's ever made a gravity bong, but it's not the safest materials that are usually incorporated <laughs> to design it. <laughs> you, you, you just twist off that little thing from your a ceiling fan. fan. ceiling fans? Yeah, and that's probably not real brass, so you're smoking something weird on that first hit, guaranteed almost. Yeah, there's definitely some unsafe coating of some sort on there. I, d- I doubt anyone smoked the ceiling fan coatings to make sure it was safe for human consumption yet. We can, we'll send that down to Mississippi. We'll see if they can get any results on that. And here's that second report. Majority of commercially available CBD products contaminated with heavy metals. I wonder what, I'd like to get one of these and smoke a joint so I could tell you guys what it was like to be contaminated with heavy metals. Like smoke. how heavy it feels? Yeah. Real like, heavy. Like, do I have that metal taste in my mouth? Is there a, is there an indication? Different metals are going to do different things. Do you feel like Colossus? You know, Am I what just does it do? Fall over and die from metal yeah. lung? Most likely not. Because I, I remember the weed we used to smoke in high school. It was pretty much not weed, just dirt. Yeah, dirt weed. They would tell you that it had red hairs in it, so be careful. The stuff, you know, our parents' generation. And that means loving. that some weed we were smoking didn't have red hairs in it. What? Was that just leaves ground up, maybe? I would assume a lot of, of what we smoked early age was just leaves ground up. I would think so. I mean, a lot of the stuff... I remember you'd get some stuff and it would be straight up dirt, twigs. Like it looked like they had gone outside and just kind of grabbed some stuff and just kind of wadded it up into a little <laughs> kindling bundle and yeah. then smash it together with some saran wrap. Right. And then give and then two fingers deep and 20 bucks. Yeah, it tasted it tasted about like that too. So investigators reviewed over 240 CBD infused products. Their analysis determined the 70% God, of the products were found to be highly contaminated with heavy metals and lead and arsenic, herbicides like glyphosate, and a host of other contaminants, including pesticides. <laughs> Damn. That's, a, that's an alarmingly high. That's almost all of it. It's troubling. Very troubling. What's Art. 70% of 240? A lot. Yeah. More than half. <laughs> yeah. In addition, more than half of these products tested contain percentages of CBD that were inconsistent with the product's labeling. Some products tested negative for any trace of CBD. <laughs> what? Jesus Christ. So you didn't even get any CBD in some of these products. The results are consistent with those of previous reports, such as those here, 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 here. Oh, God. That's a lot of here's, which similarly determined that many commercially available CBD-infused products are variable potency and may contain potentially harmful adulterants and heavy metals. They don't tell us how that could hurt us though earlier this month normal submitted written testimony to the u.s food and drug administration recommending the fda provide regulatory guidelines governing product manufacturing standardization and quality and we agree they definitely should Mm -hmm. let's hope that they use oklahoma's research instead of mississippi's i mean they can use it all the more research the merrier but the more the better the more data we can get the better we'll know how much metal we're smoking i think this is a true testament to how resilient humans are we've only had these type of uh testings for two years that can tell us that 70 percent of our products cbd products didn't even have cbd in them and we've been we've all been smoking weed our whole lives and yet still no one's died according to the statistics and now we know that no one has died that was smoking 70% heavy metals and contaminants and adulterants. Mm-hmm. And some of the stuff you were smoking didn't even have CBD in it. That's a testament to the human population as a, a resilient factor. So 
Yeah, we've been smoking for years, you know, thousands of years. Thousands of years back. No testing. Six thousand years, something like that. Ten thousand years. Does it? Who was the first smoker? We can we can we can check the the timeline of world history back here, and we can see who was probably smoking. I'd say the mound cultures. Yeah. Uh, back in the maybe mound cultures were three, definitely th- stoners. Three thousand, four thousand BC. Uh, Stonehenge. You told me they weren't. High. I mean, if you go to South America, some of those places, you know, they were yacked out building irrigation systems up on the top of the Andes Mountains. You don't build irrigation systems without a like, lot of blow, dude. I got an idea. Smoke this. See we can those build mountains this. over there? <laughs> Let's take all the water down here. Put them on top of them. Up there. How do we do that? I don't know. Smoke this. I it's coming plan. to me, though. I, I had the idea with this stuff. 